Control at alert New status track 15. one zero zero two bearing two six five TAO EW new track one zero zero three bearing two six five TAO EW new track one zero zero four bearing zero eight five TAO EW new track one zero zero five bearing one six zero TAO EW New track one zero zero six bearing one six five TAO EW New track one zero zero seven bearing one four five TAO
Engine ahead standard.
Listen, there's a good chance somebody's trying to hack your website right now. You gotta make sure you're covered. I'm talking about enterprise grade security built into your. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Go Bold. My name is Jody Atariwala and I'm your host. And today we are at the Esquimalt Graving Dock in British Columbia. And, and we will be visiting HMCS Cornerbrook, which is one of the four Victoria class submarines in the Royal Canadian Navy. We are standing on HMCS Cornerbrook right now. And the submarine that you're looking at is HMCS Chicoutimi. All the submarines are virtually identical and they are amazing, amazing pieces of machinery. Um, many people say that they are second in complexity only to spacecraft. And in a few moments, you will see the inside of these submarines and all of the complexity that goes into modern day diesel electric hunter killer submarines. So welcome and hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, um, I'm Master Sailor Jimmy Cho. I'm a Naval Combat Information Operator on board HMCS Cornerbrook. Awesome. Hey, Jimmy, thank you so much for joining me on Go Bold. Yeah, no problem. It's, it's awesome to, to be here on board HMCS Cornerbrook, uh, a Victoria-class submarine. Um, so this is, this is a cool environment. I don't think many people, uh, it, there's a lot of people that have never been on a submarine and certainly maybe fewer that have been on a Victoria-class submarine. Um, tell me a little bit about, before we get into the submarine, Jimmy, um, okay. Tell me a little bit about your family history. Uh, where do you hail from? A little bit about your background. Sure. Uh, so I'm born in Taiwan. Okay. Uh, and I moved out of Taiwan at two and moved to Saudi Arabia. Uh, my dad was a uh, radiologist in uh, the Department of uh, um, Health, uh, of health mm -hmm. in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So back in the 80s, they sent a bunch of specialized doctors and technicians to Saudi Arabia. So. I lived there for 12 years, uh, immigrated to Canada in 95, and uh, yeah, then from there, you know, went to school and eventually uh, did a whole bunch of jobs and eventually joined the Navy later on in my life at 30 years old. Nice. Um, so what made you pick uh, the military as a career field? Well, because my dad was actually in the Air Force in Taiwan, he was a uh, captain Navy as well. Um, and my brother is a uh, signals operator, uh, reservist in the army. Okay. So both, you know, my dad and brother were already part of the service. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, I felt like it's kind of like, you know, I need to do my part as well, right? <laughs> right on. So that's, yeah, that, that's why I decided to join up. So was your dad uh, a little bit disappointed when you dis when you decided to go Navy as opposed to Air Force? Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I think he thought it was, you know, it was, it was a kind of a cool change because yeah. for him, you know, he's the Air Force guy. My brother was the Army guy, so then I'm the Navy guy. Right. So it kind of worked out well that way. Awesome. Yeah. You covered off all of the bases. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, you decided to join the Navy, and then uh, a specific trade within the Navy is being a submariner. Yes. What yeah. made you pick uh, the submarine force as as a kind of an occupation within the Navy? Okay, uh, so a little bit of background of, on my trade. So as a Naval Combat Information Operator, uh, we operate all the sensors and radars on board a ship. Okay. Uh, so beyond that, uh, coming into the submarines, uh, it's more demanding because uh, now I'm not only going to be doing uh, my own trade, I have to learn uh, the trades and specifics of other people like electricians, you know, marine engineers, combat system engineer, and that for me was probably one of the biggest challenge to go outside of my comfort zone 
understanding how to be a submariner first. DAO Hilo Control at alert status five. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so did you ever do any um, time on board surface ships? Yes, you I did, did uh, four years on HMCS Calgary. Okay, yes. excellent. And so how would you describe the difference of being on a surface ship like a frigate okay. uh, versus a submarine? Well, that's pretty easy because uh, submarines, there's only like 48 of us, right? 48, 49 uh, plus riders. And, you know, you, you, you work closely with the same people every day. Right. So you understand all the strengths and weaknesses of everyone and you work well as a team. Whereas on the frigate, you know, there's like 200 plus sailors. You don't normally see everyone, mm -hmm. uh, depending on watches. Mm -hmm. So in that aspect, I really enjoyed like the camaraderie of working in a smaller crew. Yeah, nice. Now, tell me a little bit about um, what you do. So you mentioned that you work with sensors. Yes. And TAO we are Hilo sitting, control uh, at alert it, status what 15. is the area that we're currently oh, sitting is, in? This is fire control. TAO okay. Hilo control so at alert status area, 30. We actually take information from this area, uh, which is the sound room where the sonar operators work. Okay. Um, so we'll take information from here and we will come up with a target motion analysis on where targets are at. Uh, okay. On top of that, if you look to your right, this is the periscope. Um, right, right over here. Right here, okay. So we'll take all the information oh, I know. Uh, from visual, sonar, and then we can create a solution on where targets are, are TAO uh, going, Halo Control at alert status 15. Okay. And this Set is green deck. Uh, done at all times so that we don't crash into people if we're on patrol. TAO right. Halo no, Control no, at alert status 5. Right, right. So what's it like actually uh, living on board a submarine and when you're Bridge, underway, control. it's not Halo like a away. plane or a ship where you can look out the window, no. right? <laughs> no. So, I mean, that's sort of, I guess that's sort of, I wouldn't want to say it's like the downside of things because, yeah, you don't see the sun until we surface. Right. But, you know, when you're just sort of on watch, you know, you, you do your job, you go off watch, you can go read a book, you can go work out, watch TV, hang out with your friends. And, you know, it just becomes sort of like a, a, a nice routine. Yeah. And on top of that, because we don't have internet, you know, no one's looking at their smartphones, checking social media. <laughs> so you're kind of forced to like... Interact with interact, people. Interact, actual <laughs> human interaction. Right, right, yeah. A novel idea in this exactly, day and age. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Cool. Well, uh, how about we take a little bit uh, of a look around, um, if you don't mind kind of showing us the, like, describing the periscope a little bit, because I think that's what people think of when they think of a submarine. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, should we do maybe yeah. that one over there where I can see it a yeah, bit so better? so we have two periscopes. We have the search periscope. Okay. And this is the attack, per uh, attack periscope. Uh, basically, they have different functions on depending on what we're doing. Okay. Uh, normally, when if we're dove, uh, when we come up, we'll come up to periscope depth. Okay. And then we'll use our attack periscope, take a look around us, just to make sure we're safe, and if we want to surface, or just to just get a bearing of uh, targets around us. Okay. So that's the basic idea of what the periscope is. Right. So that way, the uh, the ship control officer of the watch can actually vis visually see where the target is. Right on. And so, as you mentioned, there's two periscopes. TAO, sonar this, suit, new passive the periscope track, that we're looking one, at right there, zero, that one, one is two, a search periscope. That's TAO, a search periscope. Sonar suit, and that's new the, passive normally track, that one, would be the one zero, that one, we would use. Three. Okay. Uh, in an operational environment, yep. we would use the attack periscope for various reasons. Right. And so this one, back further behind me, yes. this one is the attack periscope. That is correct. Okay. Awesome. Um, describe for me, Jimmy, the rest of the area that we are that we are in. So, um, yeah. this so is kind of like the heart, if 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 I understand it, is it correctly. Like the operations room, We're kind of like the brain of the submarine. Okay. Right, because if you look on port side or left side. Yep. Uh, this is the SCC, the uh, ship's control console. Okay. And from here, this is where we can monitor levels of uh, uh, ship systems. 
Okay, so normally... TAO, sonar suit, new passive track, one, zero, okay. one, four. TAO, sonar suit, new passive track, one, zero, one, five. TAO, sonar suit, new passive track, one, zero, one, six. TAO, sonar suit, new passive track, one, zero, one, seven. All right, so you have to tell me, Jimmy, what it's like to drive a submarine? Uh, if I would describe it, it's probably like flying a very, very slow spaceship. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so how do, how do you actually go about doing that? So you, you would be seated yeah, at this I would position. Be right here. Yeah, so normally. Yeah, normally I would be sitting here at home. Okay. Thank you. So depending on if we're dove or if we are surfaced. Okay. So if we're surfaced, normally there will be navi uh, navigating officers uh, that's on the bridge. Okay. I would have I would have my headset and I would talk to them. So they would tell me on what bearing to go, uh, what propulsion speed. And, yeah, well, what not. Uh, if we're dope, then I wouldn't have the he headset. The, uh, all the orders would just come from the uh, shift control officer of the watch. Okay. And they would just tell me what depth to go, what course and speed. Okay. So, and you do that, so your steering wheel, in okay. essence, is right in front of you. Yes. So, again, this kind of looks like, it's like flying a plane, right? Right. 